Probability distributions are an important foundational concept in probability to help us answer various questions about our data. So let's explore what is probability distribution. We will start by understanding the random variable followed by probability. And after that, I will clearly explain the probability distribution. A random variable is a quantity that is produced by a random process. In probability, a random variable can take on one of many possible values. For example, events from the state space. A specific value or a set of values for a random variable can be assigned a probability. A random variable is often denoted as a capital letter, for example, capital X. And values of the random variable are denoted as a lowercase letter and an index, for example, x1, x2, x3, and so on. There's three major types of random variables. The first one is discrete. It means values are drawn from a finite set of states. The second one is Boolean. It's either true or false. And the last one is continuous. Values are drawn from a range of real valued numerical values. Great. So what is distribution by the way? In statistics, when we use the term distribution, we usually mean a probability distribution. Good examples are the normal distribution, the binomial distribution, and the uniform distribution. To get a better understanding of what it is all about, we should start with a definition. A distribution is a function that shows the possible values for a variable and how often they occur. Keep in mind this is the random variable we just talked about. Let's understand the example I mentioned above. First one is discrete uniform distribution. Think about a fair die. It has six sides, numbered from one to six. Imagine that we roll the die. What is the probability of getting one? Of course, it is one out of six. So it must be one sixth. Now, what do you think is the probability of getting a seven? It is impossible to get a seven when rolling a single die. Therefore, the probability is zero. If we generalize this thing, the distribution of an event consists not only of the input values that can be observed. It is actually made up of all possible values. So the distribution of the event, like rolling a die, can be represented in this way. The probability of getting 1 is 1 sixth or 0 0.17. The probability of getting 2 is also 0 0.17 and so on. To make sure that we have gone through all the possible values, the sum of their probabilities must be equal to 1 or 100%. Similar to what we discussed about getting a 7, for all of the values, the probability of occurrence is 0. And that's the probability distribution of rolling a die. By the way, it is called a discrete uniform distribution. All outcomes have an equal chance of occurring. Each probability distribution has a real representation. It is a graph describing the likelihood of occurrence of every event. Here you can see the graph for our example. But keep in mind that the graph is just a visual representation of a distribution. Many people believe that a distribution is the graph itself. However, this is not true. A distribution is defined by the underlying probabilities and not the graph. The graph is just a visual representation. Let's discuss one another case. Now, think about rolling two dice. What are the possible outcomes? 1 and 1 and 2 and 1, 1 and 2 and so on. Here you can see the table with all possible combinations. Let's say we are playing a game where we are trying to guess the sum of the two dice. Can you guess the probability of getting a sum of 1? It's 0, as this event is impossible. The minimum sum we can get is 2. So what's the probability of getting a sum of 2? There is only one combination that would give us a sum of 2, when both dice are equal to 1. So 1 out of 36 total outcomes are 0 0.03. Similarly, the probability of getting a sum of 3 is given by the number of combinations that given a sum of 3 divided by 36. If you think about it, 1 and 2 and 2 and 1 are the only possibilities. Therefore, the probability is equal to 2 divided by 36, or simply 0 0.06. And here's the graphical representation of this example. 
Looking at it, we can easily understand that when rolling two dice, the probability of getting a 7 is the highest. Great. Now let's talk about the normal distribution. The normal distribution is essential when it comes to statistics. Not only does it approximate a wide variety of variables, but decisions based on its insights have a great track record. Here you can see the graphical representation of normal distribution. You have surely seen a normal distribution before because it is the most common one. The statistical term for it is Gaussian distribution, though many people call it the bell curve as it is shaped like a bell. It is symmetrical and its mean, median, and mod are equal. If you know what skewness is, you've recognized that it has no skew. It is perfectly centered around its mean. It can be denoted in this way, where n stands for normal and the tilde sign shows it is the distribution. In brackets, we have the mean and the variance of the distribution. On the plane, you can notice that the highest point is located at the mean. This is because it coincides with the mod. The spread of the graph is determined by the standard deviation as you can see here. Keeping the standard deviation fixed, a lower mean would result in the same shape of the distribution. But on the left side of the plane, this is called controlling for the standard deviation as you can see here. In the same way, a bigger mean would have the graph to the right, as you can see this one. A lower standard deviation results in a lower dispersion, so more data in the middle and thinner tails. On the other hand, a higher standard deviation will cause the graph to flatten out with fewer points in the middle and more to the end. I think that's enough for this video, we learned a lot. We talked about Random variables in probability have a defined domain and can be continuous or discrete. Probability distributions summarize the relationship between possible values and the probability for a random variable. How discrete uniform distribution can help to grab probabilities. And finally, we talked about the normal distribution along with its graphical representation and how the change in mean and standard deviation really affects. Thanks for watching.